Are saunas uh, good for you? Do they actually improve longevity? Uh, <clears throat> maybe it depends on who you ask. Uh, I'll cover a key article in this uh, space from 2015 in this video, and then <coughs> excuse me, and then cover a follow-up article from the same authors uh, in 2018. But let's uh, start off <coughs> the debate by reading a. Um, a, uh, an editorial letter, or letter to the editor uh, from the first article uh, published in 2015. Lockenen and colleagues note an association between increased frequency of sauna bathing and decreased risk of adverse cardiovascular events. Their observational study, and this is a key item, this is one of the critical points that you'll see through the raft of uh, criticisms of this study. It's not so much a criticism of the study, but a, a, a position on the debate that, look, this is an observational study. It's not a randomized clinical trial. What's the difference? Well, a randomized, in a randomized clinical trial, the key word is randomized. So if we did a randomized clinical trial for saunas, for example, we would take a large population and we would randomize who got sauna and who did not. An observational study, on the other hand, is looking at a large group of people who've made their own decisions. Some have said, I'm going to have a sauna. Some have said, I'm not. Now, why is that important? Again, let, we'll talk about that later as we get into this, uh, to this debate. Their observation, back to the, to the uh, letter to the editor. Their observational study does not establish that sauna bathing causes better cardiac health. Rather, their results may be due to self-selection. Persons at higher risk for adverse cardio, uh, cardiac events may experience unpleasant symptoms due to the tachycardia induced by sitting in a hot sauna, such as mild dyspnea, orthostasis, chest discomfort, higher frequency or severity of uh, persons um, than persons in good health. Now, <clears throat> really? Yes, these are saunas that, uh, what, go to, what is it, 75 degrees or 100 degrees centigrade? Anyhow, something closer to 150 degrees and more, uh, to up, maybe up to 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So these are very hot, and again, that's what the, the uh, one of the positions of those that would uh, argue that saunas really are, the sauna studies are a self-selection observational uh, study rather than um, something looking at do saunas actually impact health in and of themselves. <clears throat> now this is, uh, I have to admit, this is an interesting time to, uh, to be looking at this. This is the article <coughs> itself, <clears throat> but let me just go back and uh, make a point about um, the timing. Uh, right now it's January 30, late uh, January 2019, and we have one of our uh, uh, coldest uh, snaps in, uh, in memory coming through the East Coast. So I also recently happened to move back to Lexington, Kentucky, and we happen to be less than one block from the local YMCA. So... <clears throat> It's an interesting item for me and for my own um, decisions about whether I do a sauna. In the beginning, I read this article and I said, you know what, I'm going to make sure and do a sauna three times a week, at least 20 minutes per, uh, per session. Now, as I get a little bit deeper into it, not quite so sure, uh, but again, that's something we'll talk about uh, later. The title of the original article is, in, again, JAMA uh, Internal Medicine, uh, April 2015, Association Between Sauna Bathing and Fatal Cardiovascular and All-Cause Mortality Events. Tangelina Lakanen, uh, Hassan, Hassan Khan, and uh, Francesco Zaccardi, and the, um, the chief um, uh, studier was also, uh, or the principal investigator is what we call it, Pardon the, the hesitation at senior mom, moment over, uh, over the term. The principal investigator was uh, a doctor, I think Holly Lockhannon, um, and I don't know if there was a relationship between him and Tanjan Lena. 
Anyway, <clears throat> as I said, the timing is interesting. Now, I got uh, hooked into this debate by uh, watching Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Uh, I know that many of my viewers have seen uh, Dr. Patrick on a recent related uh, uh, video on uh, heat shock proteins. <clears throat> I mentioned where uh, probably a dozen of my viewers in comment boxes have mentioned Dr. Patrick. Now, that's actually where I learned about heat shock proteins, proteins that uh, manage the, um, <clears throat> they're called chaperones or of other proteins. They help other proteins um, form uh, geometrically correctly when they're forming. If they get denatured through something like heat, denatured means loss of the uh, geographic uh, components of, of the uh, protein. Uh, heat shock proteins can help um, help reform them. And they can also, because they manage uh, these proteins and how they're set up in space, they also present them for autophagy to lysosomes. And they present them for um, antigen uh, recognition within immune system functions. So a lot of different, very interesting uh, components. It, yes, your body does um, there's been research, which I'll mention, at, I think, at the end of this video, which uh, shows that, yes, your body does make these heat shock proteins as a result of heat stress. Um, and, yes, these uh, proteins have been associated with significant health impacts. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, they help uh, the protein fold uh, and form the correct uh, uh, areas in space, the correct geometry. Dr. Patrick also went on to talk about FOXO3. And I, again, I'll do a, um, a separate video on FOXO3, which uh, she would call the longevity gene uh, in terms of its impact on DNA repair and some other things. But again, back to the, um, to the debate around that uh, JAMA article of 2015. Here's another uh, actually, that article and JAMA Internal Medicine got pilloried, I think, with these types of letters. Here's another one from Joram Epstein and uh, Yehuda Schoenfeld. The link between sauna bathing and mortality may be non-causal. In other words, um, A causes B. They may be, they're saying, wait a minute, this may be A causes both B and C, and, um, or C causes both A and B. Uh, what does that mean? Well, let's let's read the, the article, read the uh, first parts of the letter. In their recent report, Lacanon and, and Associates uh, summarized a 25-year longitudinal study indicating that regular sauna bathing, Lacanon, by the way, is a cardiologist in uh, Finland, so he knows his culture around uh, saunas. Regular sauna bathing 47 times per week is associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular diseases and even all-cause mortality. That's a big deal. As, um, <clears throat> as I did a video on all-cause mortality and, and waiting for something to show a change in all-cause mortality before you agree that it's a worthwhile treatment. The problem with waiting for all-cause mortality changes is this. There are just too many different causes of death, and um, even cardiovascular death is as prominent as, as, it, as it is. It's like, what, a third? Um, it automatically gets watered down by a factor of three when you're trying to look at a treatment to see if it actually uh, improves all-cause mortality. So things get watered down too much. This one didn't. It showed an impact in all-cause mortality if people... Um, <clears throat> set in a sauna for at least what, and again, there was a dose response curve, which we'll talk about a little bit later once we talk about the study. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, and thanks for your patience if you're hanging in there with me. Now, um, Epstein and Schoenfeld are saying, we would like to suggest that regular sauna bathing is an indicator for a healthy lifestyle. In other words, C, healthy lifestyle, causes both uh, A, sauna use, and B, 
cardiovascular longevity. Adopting habits of frequent physical activity, avoiding rich food, high in saturated fat. Well, you know, that's their perspective. A lot of folks don't agree with that. But <clears throat> frequent physical activity, keeping your weight down, um, etc. And let me, it may be easier for me to just put this in personal terms. I recently moved, uh, Janice and I recently moved back to Lexington from, um, from Nashville. We happened to move less than half a block from the local YMCA. Um, now, if I go to the YMCA and sit in one of these saunas, they've got a great sauna. That, well, it's small and crowded, but it's a hot sauna. And if I go to that sauna and um, sit there for 20 minutes three times a week, is that going to uh, make me healthy? Or is the fact that I've kept my B, I keep my uh, BMI down to the low 20s, that I watch my carbs, I uh, am very aggressive about managing insulin resistance, and that I exercise with resistance training, um, high intensity intervals, and, uh, and now even some... Uh, uh, back to some uh, long, slow distance. Are those things impacting my cardiovascular risk or is the sauna? And again, these guys would say it's those things, not the sauna. What would I say? Actually, I think it's probably a little of both. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to the article itself. So this was the article, 2015. Uh, like I said, Tanjan Lena Lokanen and Jari Lokanen, who, who, MD, PhD, cardiologist in Finland, who is the uh, principal investigator of this, uh, in this study. Now, <clears throat> um, the objective was to uh, look at the relationship between sudden cardiac death, coronary heart disease, and, alcohol, um, and sauna use, frequency and duration. Um, what they did, there's a, a registry of, um, of heart disease patients in Kupio, uh, Finland. There were 2,315 middle-aged uh, men, 42 to 60 years from eastern Finland. Uh, baseline examines, examinations were done between March 84 and December uh, uh, 89. They surveyed these guys to, regarding their sauna use. There's a median follow-up of 20.7 years. Now, here's where we get into the dose-response curve. And <clears throat> I mentioned that earlier. A dose-response curve is incredibly powerful from an epidemiological perspective. Why is that? And, and what is it? So here, first, let's talk about what it is with this group. Um, <clears throat> the numbers of uh, sudden cardiac deaths were uh, 61, 119, and 10 in the three groups of the frequency of sauna bathing. The respective numbers were 89, 175, and 17 for fatal uh, coronary heart deaths. Uh, 134, oh, well, let's go back and look at percentages. 10.1%, uh, 7.8%, and 5%. Uh, the percentages in terms of um, fatal uh, coronary heart disease were 15%, 11%, and 8.5%. Um, for fatal cardiovascular uh, deaths, 22%, 16%, and 12%. Now, what are those percentages, and how do they create a... Um, uh, a, a dose response curve. Well, they're one time per week, two times per week, and four to seven times per week. In other words, in all of these uh, categories, including um, all-cause mortality, the more, the guys that went the least had the highest uh, death rates, and the guys that went the most, and the guys that stayed in there the longest per session, all had the lowest cardiovascular death rates and all-cause mortality rates. Again, <clears throat> maybe I uh, gave away the store when I talked about the argument uh, regarding this issue because 
again, a lot of folks got very, very excited about this article and saunas became a big deal and still are uh, with a lot of people. Now, the question is, uh, which is it? Okay, so his conclusions and relevance, increased frequency of sauna bathing is associated with a reduced risk of um, cardiac symptoms, cardiac death, and even all-cause mortality. As I mentioned before, uh, we have looked, uh, there's been more investigation into this issue, things like looking at um, heat shock proteins. And certainly those heat shock proteins are created uh, in response to something like a sauna. Now, <clears throat> a couple of other points about this. Uh, how hot is it? This is not just a jacuzzi. This is 175 to 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, as I mentioned regarding the uh, dose response curves, um, the more frequently you used the sauna, the lower your death rate. These are uh, uh, death rates um, for sudden cardiac death. And again, much lower for people that were using it a lot. Um, also, the same thing regarding uh, the amount of time you were in it. These were the people that were um, in a less than 11 minutes. And again, the, the steeper the curve, the, the, more, uh, the higher the death rate. 11 to 19 minutes in the middle and greater than 19 minutes per session, the lowest death rate here down at the bottom. So again, some very interesting components, uh, some very interesting perspectives and debate. There's no question that in this study in Finland that the people that used um, saunas more were far, uh, had far greater longevity. Now here's the question though. Was it due to the saunas or was it due to something else? So I just wanted to add this as an addendum to, uh, to this video. I was able to go back and find uh, a follow-up article. Uh, I had mentioned it before and said I would do that in the next video. As I get deeper into reviewing that article, it doesn't look worth another video to me. And here's why. I, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I found it, read the abstract, and I went here. PMID, you can use that uh, number and go find the, um, the home of the article, and I did, and it was Elsevier. You may remember I've mentioned Elsevier uh, articles in several other uh, areas. Basically, they have a very strong paywall, and so they put this article behind the paywall, 55 bucks, for me to get that full article. Um, if there's a whole lot of real deep interest uh, and comments regarding it, I may invest and go ahead and do it. But uh, let's go back and just look at the abstract. Um, this one is basically saying, look, combined effect of sauna breathing, uh, sauna bathing and cardiorespiratory cardio fitness on the risk of sudden cardiac deaths in Caucasian men a long-term prospective cohort study. Again, pardon me for jumping around, but I have to make the comment. If this had been a, a couple of comments, if this had been earth shaking um, and seen as very, very important, they probably could have gotten this back in as a uh, follow-up within the um, JAMA internal medicine. And I actually have no doubt, I, I expect that they probably did uh, submit this as a another article with JAMA Internal Medicine. My guess is that the uh, JAMA editors felt a couple of things. Number one, that um, maybe this was not such incredible science that they, they did in this one. And number two, they probably felt like they got beat up and pilloried in terms of um, uh, responses and letters from the original article. And they may have felt a little bit embarrassed that they didn't see this whole uh, observational <clears throat> environmental uh, concern. Either way, they didn't publish it. 
And I'm, right now, I'm not going to pay to go past the paywall to get into the details of this study. But here's what they said. Uh, they looked at, remember the, the question was, our observational study, was it the fact that these people the, were, the people that used um, uh, saunas l more often and longer per session were people that, were already in cardiovascular shape, and they could therefore stand it, and they were therefore motivated to do it because they were people that were already uh, making efforts to stay in shape. So here's what this article says. Look, we looked at both of those. The effect of sauna bathing on cardio and cardiorespiratory fitness. Now what they're saying here is they're independently associated with sudden cardiac death, meaning both in and of themselves are independently associated. Now, how did they do that? They went back and did what's called a multiple uh, hazards, uh, multiple multivariable analysis. Um, there are several ways statistically to go in and look and see, okay, um, where are men that have good cardiovascular uh, uh, conditioning but don't spend a lot of time in the sauna and where are men that have uh, poor, uh, poor cardiovascular conditioning but are, all, but are staying longer in the saunas. So basically you end up with, with what we call a two by two table. Uh, people that are uh, well conditioned and spend a lot of time in the sauna versus people that are uh, poorly conditioned and spend a lot of time in the sauna. And <clears throat> people that are well conditioned but don't spend much time in the sauna and people that are um, well conditioned and do spend a lot of time. So, <clears throat> or, and don't. The, the point is, once you get that kind of two by two analysis, uh, you can go back and make a little bit deeper um, uh, focus on um, which of these two, is there something that's causing both of these? In other words, is there a complete one to one ratio between? fitness, sauna use, and cardiac death? and Or are, is there separation between the two? And that's what they did. They just did a uh, the multivariate analysis using the, basically the same population. Now that's yet another clue regarding why uh, they didn't get this follow-up study in, um, in the, the higher uh, prestige, higher impact journal uh, JAMA. It's because they should have done that in the original study. And guess what? The editors of JAMA should have noticed that in the original study, and they should have forced that analysis before they printed the article. Again, they were embarrassed. Now, what does that mean for us, though? That's a lot of epidemiology, maybe political acad uh, academic political arguments. What, is it, what it means, though, assuming this analysis is correct, is that, yes, it does help. Saunas do help. Now, it doesn't go into why, and if we want to go back into why, we may need to go back and uh, watch some of uh, Rhonda Patrick's videos. Thank you very much for your interest.